is I'm in a content type hub, and if you don't know what a content type hub is, very simply, I define my content type in one site and use that to publish the content types out to other subscribing sites. It's part of your managed metadata service. So I'm going to create a content type, uh, and this one happens to be in my custom, and it's a general contract. So in a general contract, so this is, if you will, a operational content type. And in the operational content type, for those of you at very low down where I have the columns, I've got two properties, two additional properties besides title. I've got account, customer, vendor, and lender name, and I've got event <coughs> date. Event date is some <laughs> innocuous date that we've come up with that we can use as a generic triggering event for our information policy. So I'm going to go into the information management policy settings for that content type, and I'm going to define a new policy. So that for this particular content type, I actually have three policy stages defined. The first, if you notice on the right-hand side, it says non-records. Well, in SharePoint, that means something that has not been declared a record. Non-record. So this policy applies to information that hasn't been declared a record. Then I have a policy. Then I have a couple of more stages that apply for records. The first, and we'll go through these in a little bit more detail, let's first talk about the non-records. Sorry about that. So the first one, and my apologies for the such, sh such short duration on the, the retention schedule, this one is a modified plus 10 days. This is what we typically refer to as a work in progress policy. So as I work on this piece of information, every time the modified date changes, I'm getting a new lease that is managing the retention. If I don't modify it in 10 days in this example, it's going to be, in this case, I'm going to move it to the recycle bin, which is the action that I'm associating to the information management policy. So we're going to move it to the recycle bin. That's our first stage. Then we go down into the record stage, and I have the first of those stages is my event date plus two days. And this is one of the interesting features of the information management policy. Number one is stages, which was introduced in 2010. But the other is that now I can take that event date, which is a custom column. I can use that as the date that I'm calculating the expiration, which is two days. And I can perform an action called transfer to another location. And these are the same locations that you put in your send to locations in central administration. So this is using the actual content organizer and the official routing web service. Official file, excuse me. So the first one is event date plus two days. And then we go into the second one. And the second one, so after two days, it's going to be transferred. And that will complete the stage. And the second stage for our records is the event day plus 10 days. So you can consider this to be your long-term final retention period from your retention schedule, and now it's going to be located in the, the record center for your long-term archive. And at the end of 10 days, or in this, case, in this case 10 days, it's going to be permanently deleted, period, full stop. No, no recycle bin, no anything. No whoops, no review process. Now in your organizations, there's... Those actions have the ability to call workflows, so if you do need to work uh, a process, that's perfectly um, within the capabilities of SharePoint out of the box. So, 